Well, give us one. Give us a richer, quick story. Give us an incident or you know a moment where he had an impact on you at the time, whether it was was good or bad. There was a lot of learning experiences. I know. Yeah, it's Richard, I had so. a lot. I had a lot. I, I mean, I've got two that definitely stick out in my mind. Um, one is just sitting with him in his office before we'd even started. So this was going into my sophomore year, and he's looking at things that swimmers on the team and how they've done and. Um, for me, going to the Olympics was never something that I even considered. Like it was um, find a way for Auburn to keep winning. Um, and so he sat in my office, I sat in his office and he said, okay, do you think you can be an Olympian? And I was like, no, <laughs> I don't. I said, I want to, like, if I'm, if the best I'm, I am ever in this sport is an all American or um, an NCAA champion on a relay, like, I, I will invest fully in that. And I would love that. And remember him looking at me and being like, well, you can do that. You can, you can do that. But I also think you can be an Olympian. So let's see where this goes. And it was like, I'm, he wasn't going to push me right then and there. He, had, he didn't know me. Um, but he knew me enough through talking to the coaches that, okay, there's something a little bit more special inside Tyler that he hadn't figured out yet. And I think that's where Richard was really good is mm -hmm. um, being able to dig into that, into people. Mm -hmm. um, and he had a conversation with my wife. So my wife, Julianne, was a swimmer as well. Very, very good backstroker. Um, and she always tells the story of like sitting down with Richard and, and um, her talking about her goals and things like that. And she wanted to go 151 and it's in her backstroke. And his response, I think, was something along the lines of, well, if you can go 151 in a tuner backstroke, why can't you go 145 or 146 in a tuner freestyle? And, you know, Julianne just thinking, well, yeah, that that does make sense. Like, if I can be that good in backstroke, why can't I be that good in freestyle? And so he just always had unique ways of mm. spinning your own thoughts into thinking that you could do more without telling you how to get there. Just, you know, you could guide yourself that way. I love that, man. That's a really good uh, story because there were so many incidents I had with Richard that were like that. And yeah. maybe maybe I took them for granted over time because I had so many moments where I was like, oh, wow, yeah, that's true. I never thought of it that way. Like he's oh, he was always planting seeds. Yeah, he was. And he, and he always wanted people to do it the right way. And he wanted me to be a leader and he wanted me to be vocal. Um, but he wanted people to do things with um, like – a certain amount of respect that it deserved. And so, I mean, a kind of another story is um, during that fall, we were doing a dry land and we were doing some jumping and like I did something during a jump and busted my knee. Um, and I remember just being on the ground kind of screaming and thinking my season was over. And ended up for the next couple of weeks, I couldn't do anything but pull or swim on a cord attached to the block the the doctors wouldn't let me push off the wall or anything like that. And so I was finally able to do a pull set and um, the team was doing hundred IMs fast. And I had a couple teammates, uh, Michael Silva and Adam Klein, who are both, I mean, SEC champions and say all Americans and I'm pulling hundred IMs and I'm beating them and they're swimming hundred IMs. And, um, I remember yelling many things that I shouldn't have been yelling across the pool, telling them to get themselves in check and they needed to go faster. And, and every single time we got to the wall, um, yelling something at them. And the next day in the gym, like I'm getting ready to do this hang clean and I've never felt somebody squeeze my arm as like intensely or strongly as Richard, but he kind of came up and squeezed my arm. <laughs> he goes, listen, I love what you're doing, but you're never going to use that language on my pool deck again. And I was like, yes, sir. You got it. Um, <laughs> And so he wanted people to do things and, and to encourage, but they had, had to be done the right way. Um, and so there was a lot of learning that all of his athletes, I'm sure, went through in those lines of learning how to be respectful, learning how to be mindful of what you're saying and understand the language that you're using and how it actually does affect people. And, and not everybody responds to the same level of communication or criticism or, or even encouragement. Some people need different kinds of encouragement to be successful. So he was trying to teach me some of those things back then too.